Hi guys, welcome to Real Food Recovery. We have a special episode today that we wanted to get together and share a little information about an update in Real Food Recovery and some new lessons we are learning. And with that teaser, I am actually going to turn the time over to Jamie to take it from here. Thanks, Paige. Thank you so much. Um, so this is a really interesting um, time for for me personally, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about it because the topic that we wanted to come in and talk about today with our listeners and our members is all about what happens to our recovery when our body stops working the way that it always has. Um, and this could be for a lot of reasons, and there could be a lot of complicating factors. So I want to start first. Um, by giving a little bit of telling you a little bit of a story about my my journeys in the last few months um, in the beginning of 2024. Uh, and I noticed that I was having some symptoms of um, a lot of fatigue and a lot of brain fog and a lot of weight gain. Uh, and I was not feeling like myself. Um, and I was, as as many know, just a staunch advocate for recovery, for uh, recovery from using and abusing processed foods, uh, for, uh, single ingredient, whole food eating, um, and even single ingredient plant-based eating. Um, and when I noticed these changes in my body and I could not figure out what was going on, um, it, it did send me into some of my old food behaviors because I was stressed and I was confused and I was wondering what was going on. Um, and so I sought my old comfort mechanisms, but once that, once that got cleaned up, I realized that, um, things weren't getting any better and I was getting worse. Uh, so I began to feel like my body was really just not, not responding to anything that I was doing for it. Uh, single ingredient, plant-based eating, you know, my, my typical workouts, my, my usual amounts of sleep and rest were not helping my body. Uh, and my body was getting worse. My body was breaking down. I was, I was having major joint pain and major aches and muscle aches and pains and tons of brain fog and all kinds of issues with my, um, my mental processing. And I got to a point where I could not, um, focus and I could not, um, get enough rest, even if I tried. Um, and I was constantly taking naps and constantly behind the eight ball from an energy perspective. And I realized that I needed to um, get some help. So I went to what I thought was, I thought it was related to my midlife change. I'm in my late forties and thought that that was what was happening. So I went to a midlife doctor and got a bunch of blood work and they said, hell, well, you know, your thyroid is a little under functioning. So we'll give you a little medication and we'll give you some bioidentical hormones for this time of your life. And I went on my, my way and I thought, okay, problem solved. Well, um, over the next couple of months, uh, I did feel a little bit better, but my, my major symptoms, the fatigue and the aches and the pains and the tiredness and the, the joint, the joint issue, but the brain fog and the irritability were still there. And I could not figure out. And I stopped and I thought about when this started and it started in 2023 and it really ramped up the last half of 2023. Um, and I could not figure out what changed for me that it, other than me living in another state for work in a rented apartment. Um, and then I, I realized when we had um, in that apartment, we had a leak and they had to pull the ceiling down to replace it. There was toxic mold in that ceiling. And there had been, it had been in there for probably months and months, uh, if not more than a year or two, um, because this leak had been slowly working its way inside that ceiling uh, till it finally appeared and we could address it um, in January. And it had been probably a year plus of us seeing symptoms of something in that ceiling and me being told that it was just an old house, that it was the drywall separating and it wasn't anything to worry about. Um, so once we understood that everything in that ceiling was literally filled with mold um, and uh, there was a ceiling fan that I slept under for seven months straight that was literally blowing the air from inside that ceiling down onto me as I slept. So um, 
I quickly put two and two together and worked with a, a, a pro medical provider who helped me uh, understand that I was experiencing um, mold toxicity. And I was, I had basically been poisoned by this black mold that had been in the ceiling for uh, the entire year that I lived in this apartment. Um, and unfortunately, uh, because it had been so long in my body, it really uh, proliferated everywhere. It was in my brain, my lungs, it was in my entire gut, which affects all systems of the body. Uh, and I finally was able to get to a functional medicine practitioner who specializes in mold treatment. Um, and uh, I'm on a detox protocol now, but the downstream effects of it are my spleen has crashed, my adrenals have crashed, uh, my liver is totally unable to detoxify anything in its normal pathways now, uh, and my gut is completely um, uh, in a state of dysbiosis. So um, those are the main things we're working on right now, um, but it has been uh, a big eye opener for me um, of taking a step back, taking a step back from all areas of my life, my my work, real food recovery, the, the amount of time that I that I spend uh, doing all the things that I love um, has really taken a back seat to rest and rejuvenation, uh, medication and treatments um, and listening to my body and listening to my doctor's orders for my body. So I wanted to come in today and talk about this because it's an important topic. Um, you know, what happens when we're on our recovery path and our body, life happens and our bodies change for whatever reason, um, whether it's hormones, like I thought, or it's an environmental issue, like it turned out to be for me, or it's a stressful life event or a period of time in, in life that's exceptionally stressful. What do we do when our recovery gets completely overhauled um, and thrown off track because of, of life on life's terms. So um, I wanted to share with, with listeners what's been happening for me, um, why I've taken a step back from certain times of the day in real food recovery, and why we are being very slow and intentional with releasing podcasts, because we are really making sure that we're pulling back um, so that I, I have the time that I need to heal. Uh, there's a lot of sleeping and a lot of resting a lot of time uh, spent getting extra rest, which uh, has been doctor's orders. So um, Shay, Paige, I, I'll open it back up if there's any questions or comments you have on this topic. I'm sure I'm sure you've got a few. Yeah, I can jump in there. Jamie, first of all, I just want to say, you know, it's we've been behind the scenes haven't we and i just really want to honor you first of all you know from the team here at real food recovery just your your tenacity your willingness to just keep going you know even when there have been days where you have been floored literally on the floor in pain and agony i'm sure you know and we just want to honor you and just what's clearly come through all the time is just your heart and your love not just for obviously you, you, yourself and you want to see, but you've always held your responsibilities, the people here, the members, the people that you work with and stuff, you've always held them like close in like, you know, um, your heart. Um, and we just want to honor you and thank you for that, my friend, that in spite of what you have been going through, and I can't even begin to imagine, you know, thank you for still being the you that you are, even though you've been in some of the deepest um, frustration and pain, my friend. So, and I'm sure Paige will, will echo that too. But I wonder for you, my friend, if we had to kind of take a little bit of a, a step back, what do you think has been the hardest um, and most frustrating thing for you? Um, I'm sure there's probably a few things, but what do you think has been the hardest, the most frustrating, especially where you've had to change certain things or draw a hard line in certain instances? What is that? What's been the hardest yeah. and most frustrating for you? Everything, everything changed and everything had to change pretty quickly. It changed. My eating had to change uh, in April when I began what I thought was my perimenopause midlife medication journey, my hormone replacement stuff. Um, again, that's what I thought the issue was. So I, I changed from a very high carb, low fat way of eating to a more, you know, moderate carb, lower carb and um, moderate fat way of eating. 
uh, incorporating animal products again, which I had not done for years. Uh, so it was alarming uh, and a big change. Um, but I was able to do everything I needed to do. I was able to work out. I was able to, um, you know, figure out the food thing. It, it was uncomfortable and it was confusing. Uh, and that definitely added to my stress. But I was able to kind of mitigate it with, um, you know, extra rest and just doing what I thought I needed to do, waiting for the hormones to work. And I noticed things weren't working. And um, that's when I had to find another way. And I noticed that my joint pain and my aches and my muscle issues were getting worse and worse and worse. By this point, I I was in physical therapy. I was needing to do breathing treatments for uh, shortness of breath and breathing issues that I was having during workouts. Um, and I'm like, this isn't, this isn't normal. Something is going on here. And then I was starting to react to the foods that I was eating. Um, reactions looked like uh, insane amounts of water weight gain uh, in an hour. Um, it looked like, you know, um, highs and lows of weight. I gained 40 pounds and in a matter of months, um, it was a lot of reactions to foods that I never, ever had an issue with. Um, it seemed like my body was attacking itself and I did not understand why. Um, and I was diagnosed with a few other issues on, around the, my lymphatic system and my, my body's ability to to move lymph fluid around it, all of a sudden it couldn't anymore, uh, especially in my lower body and I could not understand what happened. Um, but at this point, my spleen was actually down-regulating. And when your spleen down-regulates, that is responsible for moving that lymphatic fluid in your body. So when your spleen's not working, your lymphatic fluid's not working. And the spleen backs up when the liver goes offline. So you can imagine how long this had happened in my body and how much, um, you know, the thyroid was just sort of the canary in the coal, in the coal mine. My adrenals were down, my spleen's down, my liver's clogged. There's nothing moving in my body the way it should. So um, when I changed the food, uh, I realized that I could not eat carbohydrates anymore the way that I had normally eaten them. And I was told that this isn't forever, but this is for right now. I needed to completely change my diet in a in a total elimination style. So the the guidance given to me by doctors was to totally eliminate all foods except for red meat and a little bit of salt and some green uh, leafy leafy vegetables and cruciferous vegetables and water. And that's it. And, uh, I have over, you know, basically overnight about a month or so ago, I essentially went into a ketogenic slash carnivore, ketovore, a style of eating, which is something that I never in a million years thought I would do. Um, but here I am doing it and, uh, it is, uh, helping with the inflammation certainly. And it's helping, um, my body start to heal some of the things that it was literally on fire with, um, Again, I'm not advocating for any particular plan or style of eating. This is not the message, guys. The message is that when our body um, is sick, we do what we need to do to, to, to get it healthy again. And this is something that I never in a million years thought I would do. Uh, and here I am doing it. And it, and it, it is having the desired effects. Uh, the other thing that Paige, that Paige and, and Shay know that I've had to stop doing, which is something I love doing, is I've had to stop working out. Uh, I'm not allowed to get my heart rate up over a certain amount for a certain period of time at all. So um, my workouts now look like uh, very, very gentle walking, some gentle stretching, my physical therapy, uh, which gets my heart rate up, a, you know, a, a small amounts, but it's mostly stretching and uh, strengthening work and that's it. I'm not allowed to lift heavy things. I'm not allowed to get my heart rate up over a certain amount. And I am not, uh, I've been told to leave stressful situations as soon as I can, right? As soon as I can get out of a stressful situation, whatever I can do to mitigate it, get out because my adrenal system cannot handle the, the stress on its system anymore. So um, it's a whole new way of life. It's a whole new way of life. There's a lot of, there's a lot of soft music. There's a lot of, uh, you know, nap taking if needed. There's a lot of extra sleep happening. Um, 
And there's a lot of, a whole lot of listening to my body um, and honoring it and not thinking I know better than what my doctors are telling me. Jamie, can I jump in here? Um, yeah. It just um, makes me think about, this is the model that we teach everybody, regardless whether it's a health issue or recovering from a binge the night before or to having, getting, preparing to go on vacation. It's the not give up and the seeking for answers. And when we have a problem, we get back up and we keep searching. So it's literally the exact model of what recovery looks like. You didn't give up, you kept searching and you kept making edits until you found the right solution for you. And I oftentimes talk about how recovery is plan B it's in plan B. We just keep looking for the next right thing till we get it right. And so my hat's off to you because you didn't give up. You kept looking for different solutions till you found what is working for you. And like I said, whether it's recovering from a binge or whatever other struggles you're having, you know, getting off sugar, you just keep looking for how can I get this done? Not, oh, well, I can't do it. So I I'm just going to give up trying. I'm going to keep searching we're warriors, right? This is what warriors look like. This is what they do. So thank you for that example. Yeah, thank you. Um, and that's that's a good point, right? It's it's really been a lot of seeking and um, re uh, re attacking or sort of repositioning so that I could f figure out the next thing that I have to do. Um, and I never, you know, I was for years and years was you know, workouts, lifting, um, movement of all kinds, you no know, walking and formal, formal, you know, uh, heart, heart rhythm and, and, uh, cardiac work as well as, you know, fastidious about my food for a very long time, uh, and, and my plant foods for a very long time. And now to have them really overnight all pulled and stripped away, except for a few is, um, is wild and having to reacclimate to, eating animal meat that I have not eaten in four years. There, there was a huge learning curve for me with that. And there's some days there still is. Yeah. I'd love to jump in as well, Jamie, just, just on that. I mean, that's well, I really appreciate you taking the time and vulnerability to share these innermost points. We have talked this week in our community hours about what happens to you happens to me. And what happens to me happens to you. So through you, we're able to learn more and grow in our own lives. So I really do appreciate all of your wisdom. Is there anything else anybody wants to share or tie it up uh, in a knot with your ahas, your takeaway? What does it look like moving forward? Yeah, Shay, did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. We, we had a little bit of a lag there, but I just wanted to ask you one quick question, my friend, because that's a lot mm -hmm. of scary because you're, this is like the biggest plot twist, isn't it? Like you, you've got so much, <laughs> there's so much trust and the things that are really on, on paper, healthy, like my healthy rhythms, my healthy nutrition, my healthy plans, and you've developed this kind of plan. And then all of a sudden this left field comes along and that's a mm -hmm. scary place to be. Because all the things we throw our trust into and have been working, suddenly that's being stripped away. With that probably comes a whole load of story, you know, like stories oh, yeah. and thoughts and beliefs and stuff. And I wonder, my friend, just just what is one thing that maybe you found yourself um, like a story or belief that you uh, that may have been kind of ticking around, but that you you actively had to do some work in shifting or leaning into and leading uh, yourself through, um, you know, anything like that, my friend, that would be really helpful for our listeners as well when they find themselves in these left field spaces. Uh, yeah, I, I would say, you know, it brings, and it's not about religion, but it's about, you know, I think about my spiritual walk and I think about one of my very favorite, you know, spiritual scriptures and it's it's you know leaning not on our own on our own understanding um and if i tried to lean on my own understanding uh in this i would still be probably doing all the things that had got me here 
not knowing that I had this mold exposure, not knowing that my body could not do its normal tasks, let alone detox from what it had been, you know, given. So um, I was not able to do uh, to, to really understand any of it. And I'm also not able to understand why I have to change everything. I just have to literally walk in faith and I have to um, take the leap of how important it is for me to listen to the doctors, listen to what, if my body is feeling better um, and going, going with that instead of going with, well, this is what this influencer said worked, or this is what, you know, this protocol says to do well, or, you know, and for me, it was something that a lot of people can eat very easily. You know, dairy, dairy was very toxic for me. And that was something if I had listened to, um, you know, mainstream uh, health knowledge, there's there's some knowledge in, in the low carb world that that dairy is dairy is an OK thing. And for many, it is. And for just for me, it it is not. Um, so that is something from my plant-based journey that I've talked, that I took with me. Um, but it's really like not, not leaning on my own understanding. It's, it's walking out in faith and seeing what sticks and seeing what doesn't. And there's certain things, even in the, in the keto war space that work for everyone and they don't work for me. Um, seafood worked for me for a little bit and now every time I eat it I have hives or I uh get all kinds of water retention overnight uh and irritability um there are certain things with uh spices that I would just spice my food like we're talking about basic black pepper basic spices I can't eat them right now my, my body reacts violently to them with all kinds of swelling and all kinds of reactions so, you know, I really, if I leaned on my understanding, uh, I would be probably sicker than I, than I was at the beginning. Don't you think there's something to be said too for, especially as women, we, we're not all going to have this type of traumatic experience that you've had to go through, but our bodies do change. So I think there's a message in here too, that what works for us now we need to be open to the fact that it may not always work for us, whether it be exercise, whether it be food, whether it be sleep, whether it be spirituality, whether it be stress management, our bodies will be continually changing as we age. And so being open to, to keep the blinders off, to just stay on top of how are we doing and um, just, I guess, just making edits where necessary. So paying, paying attention regardless. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, also be gentle with yourselves. I, I Paige, this is something that you and I, maybe more than you, than Shay knows, Paige knows I have been a, a vocal advocate for certain ways of eating and very, I've been very, you know, black and white about it and very, um, legalistic about my eating or the way that I think people should, should eat. And I was very vocal and it was, I'm, I'm very humbled because it truly, um, what works for some does not work for all. And what works for some during a period of time may not work for the, that same group at another period of time for a thousand different reasons. Uh, it is not a moral failing. It is not, uh, something that is that people have, uh, you know, are wronged for, uh, even though they will be judged and I'm, I might be judged too. Um, but there are so many reasons that people need to change their mind. And I think instead of judging people for changing their approach and um, for doing something different, I think it's important to just have compassion and understanding um, instead of judgment. So, and that that's a lesson that I got taught first and foremost, because I was probably the judgiest in my head about other people and how they did what they did. So- Which um, is that's which is why we don't tell people what to eat here, right? We don't tell people about you. Yeah. We just stick, we just encourage people to eat single ingredient foods because that is a non-negotiable. I mean, that's inarguable, right? Everybody can understand that, but that's why we don't tell people what the, a, a certain diet plan is. Because how would I know 
what's best for anybody else other than me. It's a big enough struggle taking care of me and my food plan. So far be it from me to know what's best for anybody else. Good point. Good point. And that's, that's the, I think that's the best takeaway page is doing, doing my life is hard enough, especially now. I don't need to open my mouth about anyone else's life. Anything else, any concluding things that anybody wants to say? Oh, no. Okay. Well, if you want to know more about us, you can find us at realfoodrecoveryforyou.com. That's the number four and the letter U. And we hope to see you there. Thanks, guys. Next time. Bye-bye.